student scholars in association with Goa Headmasters Association. Mathematics is everywhere, in you, in me, it's in the air. What you need is the eyes to see mathematics in every creation of God. Greetings and a warm welcome to the 10th standard students for today's mathematics class. In day-to-day -day life, we sometimes make statements for the possible future events, such as, this lady looks at the sky and tells her son, most probably it's going to rain, we better go home. If you see, look at the steps, the formulas on the steps of the staircase of one of the school by looking at it, I can say, I doubt any student will fail in mathematics. And all of a sudden, you see heavy rush at the petrol pumps. Because petrol prices are likely to increase. The words, most probably, doubt, and likely, has an element of uncertainty and this uncertainty can be measured numerically let's take an example in this athletic event of 100 meters race what is the chance that athlete in yellow jersey will win the race altogether there are eight athletes out of these eight athletes, there are three athletes in yellow jersey. Therefore, the chance that athlete in yellow jersey will win the race is three divided by eight. We'll take one more example. We have seen toss of a coin many times for the football matches. Referee tosses the coin, and the two captains, based on the toss, decide whether to kick the ball or take the side. Likewise, a coin is tossed once. What is the chance of getting ahead? I've got the coin here. It has head and the tail. The possible outcomes are head, tail. Since we want the chance of getting a head, one head out of two possible outcomes, that gives us the chance of getting a head. Today, we are going to learn more about these chances in our topic, probability. The weightage for this topic, it carries three marks. Questions that are asked, one, MCQ-based question. Second, short answer question carrying two marks. Now, before we understand probability, let us understand some of the fundamental terms that are required to understand probability. Now, what is a random experiment? As I said, this is a coin. If I toss this coin, that means I'm performing an experiment on this coin. And this coin, once it lands down, it will show either head or tail. 
That means any action which gives one or more results is called a random experiment or trial. We'll take some examples. A coin is tossed once. A card is drawn from a pack of cards. A die is rolled once. These are some of the examples of a random experiment. What do you understand by an outcome of an experiment? If I toss this coin, this coin, once it lands, it will show a result on its upper face. That's called an outcome of an experiment. Each result of the experiment is called an outcome of the experiment. For example, a coin is tossed, head comes up. A card is drawn from a pack of cards. The drawn card is an ace. A die is thrown once. The upper face of the die shows six. To understand these outcomes, to understand these outcomes in a better way, we'll take this example. Write all the possible outcomes when two coins are tossed. Also state the number of possible outcomes. So I've got here two coins. The possible outcomes are head head, head tail, tail head, and tail tail. So there are four possible outcomes. Therefore, the number of possible outcomes is four. Remember, the coin has two faces. Then we can write a general rule for finding the number of possible outcomes. The number of possible outcomes when n coins are tossed is two raised to n. I want you to try this example. It's for you. Try to solve this as fast as possible. The number of possible outcomes when three coins are tossed is option A, 6, option B, 8, option C, 10, and option D, 16. Try to solve as fast as possible. Since three coins are tossed, n is equals to 3. And we know the general rule. And the general rule is number of possible outcomes when n coins are tossed is 2 raised to n. That means 2 raised to 3. And 2 raised to 3 means 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. That is 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8. And the correct option is B. Let's try to write the possible outcomes when two dice are thrown. What are the possible outcomes when two dice are thrown? Solution. You can see here a blue die and a red die. On the upper face of the blue die, there's one. And on the upper face of the red die, it shows one. Come on, let's write the possible outcomes. The possible outcomes are one comma one. Now the second die on its upper face shows two. So it's going to be one comma two, one comma three, 1 comma 4, 1 comma 5, 1 comma 6. Now you can see the blue die on its upper face shows 2. And the red die on its upper face shows 1. 
That means the outcome is 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2, and go on writing till you get Six comma six. Why six comma six? Because there are six faces on one die, six faces on the other die. So the number of possible outcomes will be six multiplied by six, that is thirty six. Hope you understood this. Therefore, we can arrive to a conclusion that number of possible outcomes when n dies are thrown is 6 raised to n. To understand this in a better way, let's take an example. I want you to solve it as fast as possible. Let's try this. The number of possible outcomes when three dies are thrown is dash. The options are a is 36, B is 64, C is 216, and D is 12. And how do we arrive at the result, the answer? Since three dies are thrown, that means N equals to 3. And the general form of finding the number of possible outcomes when n dies are thrown is 6 raised to n, that is 6 raised to 3, that means 6 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 6. 6, 6 are 36 into 6 is 216. And the correct option is C. Well done, dear students. Let's understand what an event is. What is an event? An event of an experiment is a collection of some outcomes of the experiment. For example, when a die is thrown, odd prime number comes up. Now, what are the possible outcomes when a die is thrown? The possible outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Since we want odd prime number to come up, I'll say let E be an event that an odd prime number comes up. And what are the odd prime numbers from the possible outcomes? The odd prime numbers are 3 and 5. That means outcomes favorable to E are 3 comma 5. Hope you understood this. Let's move on. Let's understand about an elementary event. An event having only one outcome of the experiment is called an elementary event. We'll also try to understand equally likely events. Two or more events are said to be equally likely if each one of them has an equal chance of happening or occurring. When a coin is tossed, head and tail has equal chances of occurring. As students, we have learned about the random experiment, the outcome of an experiment, event, elementary event, and equally likely events. Now, let's try to understand probability. To understand probability, there are two approaches. That is two ways to study probability. The first approach 
is the experimental approach. What we have learned in ninth standard. Now, what is this experimental approach to probability? Experimental probability is found by repeating an experiment and observing the outcomes. It's defined as probability of an event equals to number of times event occurs divided by total number of trials. To understand this, we'll take this example. A coin is tossed five times and the results are noted as follows. First row shows head, second row shows tail, third row shows tail, fourth row shows head, fifth row shows tail. Find the probability of getting a head. How to get the probability of a head? We go back to the experimental probability definition. It says, probability of an event equals to number of times event occurs divided by total number of trials. And we'll use this to solve this example. The probability of getting a head equals to number of times head appears divided by total number of trials. And how many times head occurs? Head occurs twice out of five. And that's the probability of getting a head. That is two upon five. Hope you understood the experimental probability definition. Let's move on to the second approach, that is the theoretical approach to probability. Theoretical probability can be found without performing experiment. And it is defined as probability of an event E equals number of outcomes favorable to E divided by number of possible outcomes of the experiment. And this definition of probability was given by French mathematician Pierre Simon Laplace in 1795. Let's understand probability based on some examples. A die is thrown once. Find the probability of getting a number greater than three. So what are the possible outcomes when a die is thrown? The possible outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six. Let A be an event of getting a number greater than three. Now, what are the numbers greater than three in the possible outcomes? So, outcomes favorable to A are four, five, six. Therefore, probability of an event A equals three outcomes out of total possible outcomes, that's six. And we can get rid of the common factor, that's three ones are three, and three twos are six, that's one upon two. Let's take one more example. An urn contains four red balls, five green balls, four purple balls, and two blue balls. A ball is selected at random from the urn. What is the probability that a ball selected is red? To find the probability that a ball selected is red, we should know the total number of balls that are there in the urn. Total number of balls 
there are four red balls, five green balls, four purple balls, and two blue balls. The total is 15. Let E be an event that the ball selected is red. Since we want the probability that the ball selected is red, let's take E as an event the ball selected is red. Number of outcomes favorable to E. Since there are four red balls, it's four. Therefore, probability of event E is 4 divided by 15 and that gives us a probability that the ball selected is red is 4 upon 15. Here's an next example. Two coins are tossed. What is the probability that at least one head comes up? Second, no head comes up. When two coins are tossed, the possible outcomes are head head, head tail, tail head, tail tail. Probability that at least one head comes up. Now, in the possible outcomes, we have head head, head tail, tail head. And in these three outcomes, there is a head. Therefore, it's going to be tree divided by total number of possible outcomes. That's four. So, the probability that at least one head comes equals to three upon four. Next. We want the probability that no head comes up. No head comes up. In the possible outcomes, we can see tail tail. That means there is no head. So probability that no head comes up equals to 1 divided by 4. That completes our problem. Let's try to understand about a pack of cards. In a pack of cards, there are 52 cards. They are categorized based on colors. 26 red cards and 26 black cards. They are further categorized as 13 hearts and 13 diamonds. These are the red cards. And black cards are categorized as spades and clubs. There are 13 spade cards and 13 club cards. In each of the category, say hearts, there is one king, one queen, one check. King, queen, check are called picture cards. Ace is not a picture card. And there are number cards from 2 to 10. Since in each category there are three picture cards, that means there will be 12 picture cards or face cards. And these are four kings, four queens, and four checks. Let's try an example based on this pack of cards. A card is drawn from a well shuffled deck of 52 cards. What is the probability of getting a king? To find the probability of getting a king, there are four kings in a pack of cards. And pack itself is having 52 cards. So probability of drawing a king is 4 upon 52. 4 ones, 4 thirteens. That gives us 1 upon 13. Hope you understood.
This example based on a pack of cards. We'll try some more examples. A bag contains a red ball, a blue ball, and a yellow ball. All the balls being of the same size. Sia takes out a ball from the bag without looking into it. What is the probability that she takes out the yellow ball, the red ball, and the blue ball? Let's say balls and number of balls. Red, one. Blue, one. Hello, one. Total number of balls is three. I'll say, let R be the event, the ball taken out is red. The next event, I'll write it as, let B be the event, the ball taken out is blue. And the third event, Y be the event, the ball taken out is yellow. Case one, we want the probability that Sia takes out yellow ball. So probability of getting an yellow ball is one yellow ball out of three. Probability of getting a red ball is one red ball out of total three. So probability of getting a red ball is one upon three. Probability of getting a blue ball will be one out of three. As there is one blue ball from the total three balls. Yeah, my dear students, I'm going to use the same example to arrive to a new statement or a concept. What I'll do here is, I'll add up all the probabilities. Probability of ball being yellow, probability of ball being red, and probability of ball being blue. So, probability that a ball is yellow is one upon three. Probability that a ball is red is one upon three. Probability that a ball is blue is one upon three. And you get this as three out of three, which is one. That means sum of probabilities of all these three elementary events is one. And that leads us to the statement, the sum of probabilities of all elementary events of an experiment is one. Hope you understood. Remember the statement. I'll repeat the statement. The sum of probabilities of all elementary events of an experiment is one.